Marianne, please tell me. Do not ask me questions. You have no confidence in me. This reproach from you. You who confide in no one. I have nothing to tell. Nor I. We neither of us have anything to tell. I because I conceal nothing and you because you communicate nothing. I do wish Lady Charteris would limit her invitation list. I do not know when I've been so warm. I'm glad we left early. There now. <laughs> Lover's quarrels are swift to heal. <laughs> that letter will do the trick. Mark my words. Well, I must be off. I do hope he doesn't keep her waiting much longer, Miss Dashwood. It hurts to see her looking so forlorn. Pigeon, pigeon. What a welcome I had from Edward's family, Miss Dashwood. I'm surprised you never mentioned how agreeable your sister-in-law is. And Mr. Robert, also affable. It is perhaps fortunate that none of them knows of your engagement. Excuse me. My dear madam, I'm quite at a loss to discover in what point I could be so unfortunate as to offend you. My esteem for your family is very sincere, but if I have given rise to a belief of more than I felt or meant to express, I shall reproach myself for not having been more guarded. My affections have long been engaged elsewhere, and it is with great regret that I return your letters and the lock of hair which you so obligingly bestowed upon me. I am, etc., John Willoughby. Oh, Marianne. Dearest. It is best to know what his intentions are at once. Think of what you would have felt if your engagement had carried on for months and months before he chose to put an end to it. We're not engaged. But you wrote to him. I thought then he must have left you with some kind of understanding. No. He's not so unworthy as you think him. Not so unworthy. Did he tell you that he loved you? Yes. No. Never absolutely. It was every day implied, but never declared. Sometimes I thought it had been, but it never was. He has broken no vow. Yes, he has broken faith with all of us. He made us all believe he loved you. He did. He did. He loved me as I loved him. I had to come straight up. How are you, Miss Marianne? Oh, poor thing, she looks very bad. It is no wonder, Miss Dashwood, for it is but too true. I was told in the street here by Miss Morton, a very great friend, he is to be married at the end of the month to a Miss Gray with 50,000 pounds. Well, said I, if it is true, then he is a good-for-nothing who's used my young friend abominably ill, and I wish with all my soul that his wife might plague his heart out. Oh, oh my dear. He's not the only young man worth having. With your pretty face, you'll never want for admirers. <laughs> Better let her have her cry out, and I'm done with it. I will go and look out something to tempt her. Does she care for olives? I cannot tell you. 